Hello, friends, and welcome to Authors and Dragons, the show within a show side quest in which we do things that are not what our show is known for. Uh, sometimes we play games, sometimes we hold interviews. Tonight, we're, we're, we're going to do something. We'll see. Uh, with me uh, from the Authors and Dragons crew is Steve Wetherill and Rick Gualteri. Say hello. Hello. Hey, guys. Hello. And joining us today are our special guests from the Josh vs. Josh podcast, Corey something and two guys named Josh. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. It's a JBJ podcast. It's okay. It doesn't matter. No, it's JBJ is not Josh versus Josh. I'm sorry. JVJ could mean anything, Bevan. Don't make assumptions. Yeah. <laughs> Take it away, Steve. <laughs> what are you just uh, foisting this on me, are you? <laughs> I brought us in. I walked us in. In your bold new format where we just stumble into a fucking podcast with no plan whatsoever. He stole that from us. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. We can start on that. What exactly is JVJ for, for those of our listeners who do not know? What is it you guys actually do? We interview authors, narrators, and uh, the guy who sung She's So High. <laughs> <laughs> And Judge Judy, hopefully. Judge Judy. Yeah, we're, we're working on Judge Judy. Oh, nice. He's Ooh. a tough nut to crack. We we got a contact who knows uh, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum, and we're hoping he can get us with Judge Judy <laughs> pretty soon. Because yeah, cause fuck having Jeff Goldblum. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> take take your Jurassic at Park ass and talk to Judge Judy, motherfucker. <laughs> You're only using me for judging you. <laughs> well, you gotta you gotta think of the big picture, guys. Who do you yeah. think's more entertaining, us or Jeff Goldblum? We can't exactly. have him stealing the thunder. I hope Judge Judy doesn't hear you say that. She's <laughs> no, if she listens to this podcast, it's going to ruin your entire fucking plan, guys. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I mean, you know. I mean, here's the thing. Some, sometimes really good actors. Like, have you ever heard, like, Robert De Niro, like, you know, speak as Robert De Niro? Like, he can play any character he wants, but then when he turns to Robert De Niro, it's like, you know, just just plain vanilla frosting. Yeah, yeah but Jeff Goldblum's been acting as Jeff Goldblum for the last 30 years, so. <laughs> That is a good point. He does that show where he's fascinated by things. That seems pretty genuine. Yeah, it's, it seems to be very much a case of let's put point a camera at Jeff Goldblum and then just I don't know. I guess they probably just walk away, <laughs> let it happen. Uh, that 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 is probably true. You like I remember watching Thor Ragnarok and he was great in it, but at the same time he was Jeff Goldblum playing Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> yeah, they definitely made the movie around you know pointing a camera at Jeff Goldblum. I don't think they even like put him in costume. I think he was just wearing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, all right, you, you, I came on your show, you interviewed me, and I, I left the show wondering, why, why is this called? Well, I, I was of the of the mind that it was called Josh versus Josh at the time. I didn't know you went all hip and went JVJ like, like KFC, but <laughs> that was our inspiration. <laughs> but, uh, what are the kids like? Yeah, but yeah, hip. like the Joshes weren't like battling each other or anything and I, I kind of know the answer because I went back to your to your early origins to uh, listen to your first uh, few episodes and when it was more properly titled Josh vs. Josh and, uh, <laughs> and I still am not sure exactly what I was listening to well, how did this get started? Well originally I think it just was me and Josh uh, have totally different uh, views on the world and we were going to get questions and answer those questions and debate. Um, but slowly Josh, uh, just became more hateful and I quit the podcast for a while. <laughs> That's true. I didn't make it that far. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, was like, well, I, I, missed... was like, yeah, I was like 150 episodes in. So oh, it sounds like I missed the golden age. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that the Josh versus Josh format might have like, you know, some drastic end game. It's like, 
one of you has to die. Yeah, it sounds like there was actually a winner in the Josh versus Josh. <laughs> That's, well, I guess you could think of it. That well, I don't way, know. Sure. We, we we had other people on, and it just didn't go as smooth. Mostly because they quit showing up for the podcast. Mm, mm, well, yeah, they they keep telling me not to come back, but I just I persist. <laughs> Well, we originally were doing another podcast about the uh, the TV show The OC, and Josh literally just wandered in one day and became part of it somehow. Wow. And it's history from there. It's all, yeah. And it's all on tape, guys, if you want to <laughs> pause it and go listen. There you go. For anybody listening who's looking to get a <laughs> podcast break, we recommend just wandering in. <laughs> I, I I I love I love this thing. It's like you guys do a podcast, and some like random vagrant wanders in asking for some spare change. You're like, put sit down and put that, that this headphone headset on. Well, I'm sure as you guys know, it's easier with three people than two people. Uh, that is true. You talking about sex? <laughs> <laughs> That's harder for me. What do you do with the other thirty minutes? <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of, you know, it's like triple the awkward silence. No one needs that. But, uh, no, I think, when's the last time we tried to do a podcast with two people? I think we did one for the Mimic Chess with me and you, Bevan. Yeah, that was, uh, I, I, think we did I was drunk off our asses. Yeah, talking about uh, catheters. Yeah, that was our hard-hitting interview format that we have not done since. Well, since we switched to the interviewing people format... We only had one episode where it was only two people. That was Corey, me, and you. We interviewed Larry Doyle, and that was our worst episode by far. That was pretty bad. He, uh, like uh, Bob, consistently drank more throughout our episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally that's a, a recipe for a successful podcast, yeah. He didn't have a kimchi fridge. He did not. Oh, so he had like go all the way into the kitchen or like run downstairs and stuff. And yeah, it was like five couldn't. or six minutes. Yeah. We, just, we didn't edit it out. Oh we thought God. it would flow better. Well, let's back up here a second. Bob, you have a kimchi fridge? Yeah, well, well I mean, it's not an actual kimchi fridge. Like, you know, that, that's a, an actual um, specific appliance. We now he's changing his door. Well, no, we have a refrigerator, but it's a regular refrigerator, but it's it's reserved for kimchi specifically <laughs> you know we've literally been talking about your kimchi fridge every episode since we talked to you so you better not tell us that there's not a real kimchi fridge i actually tried it at a uh uh casino buffet because of your recommendation <laughs> did, well did it keep your kimchi cold no what? I, no i mean he kimchi. tried kimchi. he tried kimchi no he, yeah, he he walked into casino and he tried their fridge yes <laughs> It was excellent. Let's Let's on point. <laughs> Don't mind me, guys. I just want to see if the fridges here work. <laughs> I want to put my beer in here. Holy shit, it's a casino fridge. This is living. <laughs> Every venue he goes into. Now, do you have a kimchi fridge? And, uh, you got to keep in mind, guys. Casinos are all about customer service. So if they won't yeah. let you try out their fridge, go down the road. <laughs> That's an excellent piece of advice. I was say next time, mm-hmm. I, next time I go for like Mexican food, I want the man to see their kimchi fridge. Yeah, I mean that's not an unreasonable demand. They've either got one or they haven't. <laughs> it's a fifty-fifty shot. Wait, yeah. they would be so confused. What is kimchi throw? It's Korean, Korean right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it at a Mexican restaurant. They might get mad at you. Do it at everything but a Korean restaurant. <laughs> Kim, kimchi is awesome. I think I think every nationality just should have their own like you know s- swing on it. Like next time I go to Olive Garden, I want to demand like you know unlimited kimchi instead of their fucking breadsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, you're not going to be making any friends at this rate. No, because <laughs> it's it's a good way to test out the customer service. You go to Olive Garden, they won't give you kimchi. You go down the road to the next Olive Garden. Well, also, you, you don't know. Maybe they've got some bomb-ass kimchi. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Might, might, be a, might be a secret menu. You know, you go into Starbucks and you, like, you know, you say, like, you know, you, you say, give me a random, like, random thing. And they hand you, like, you know, some magical, like, you know, mixture. Maybe you go into Olive Garden and suddenly, like, holy shit, nobody's ever asked about our unlimited kimchi platter. 
<laughs> they'll have pickled something. I can call it pickled pizza. something. <laughs> what have you got that's pickled? Just bring me that <laughs> from your secret fridge. Chop chop. Come on. Well, you know, Olive Garden's known for their yeah. pickling prowess. Yeah, it's like so they're the ones to ask. If from now from now on, I'll think of like pickled herring as Norwegian kimchi. <laughs> Norwegian kimchi. Yeah, why not? It'd be great if you just went out on this crusade brick and uh, just discovered this entire fucking conspiracy of kimchi fridges throughout the uh, restauranteering world. Yeah, ch- chance are you'd, you'd see like just a, like a headline on like page four of like you know some like some no name paper of like crazed 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 pos- podcaster arrested. <laughs> Local man irritates restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way better headline. <laughs> Slow news day in local town. You should write headlines that are in the background of cartoons. <laughs> well, I did. You know, that is something I aspired to do with my education, but it didn't quite work out. All right. So, well, we've we've heard your your worst guest who didn't have the presence of mind to bring more than one beer from the fridge at a time during an interview. <laughs> Um, did, did you, I'm tempted to ask, did you, who's your best guest, but you know the, what, the, the bad ones are more fun. Do you have any other bad guest stories? I don't think we should probably say Cameron's name out loud, but that was kind of a stinker. Yeah. Yeah, Cameron Milan. <laughs> <laughs> I like Cameron, but he, he was just, didn't want to be there. Yeah. He was very awkward. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, what was David Neff who went dis- who oh, disappeared? Oh, yeah, we did interview this one guy who disappeared immediately after the podcast. Like, we don't know he or something? Or? He went to visit a uh, Jello plant. I don't know, yeah. Jello plant for his local paper, and no one's ever heard from him again. I, that doesn't that doesn't ring true. I, it is true. Uh, I don't know. It sounds like something I might say if I just suddenly decided I didn't want to be on a podcast. <laughs> Let's verify it. What was his name? We can look him up, see if he's been found or, or if he's like in, like floating in a jello mold. Yeah. I don't know his name. It's like an actual name that's his pen name, but his email is Big Black Dildo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I wasn't taken, honestly. <laughs> it's a good score. Yeah. Talking about favorite guests? Yeah, could you have one? Oh yeah, I'm Evan. <laughs> yeah, I have listened to most of like <laughs> since since you've been on. I've listened to every one of your books, so you might be my favorite guest to this point. Oh, nice. Huh. Or at oh, least uh, books since then. I don't know. <laughs> I believe you told us we won't shut the fuck up when you were on, so. I- <laughs> Yeah, now I'm starting to rethink that. Yeah. <laughs> is this your promotional strategy, baby? Just going to other people's oh. still to shut the fuck up. Uh, were, you, were you guys talking to me? I, this is a little bit embarrassing. I had to step away to get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is Steve's fault because I had to get a new mic because Steve wasn't satisfied with the, the sound quality coming from my, my headset. So, you know, with that headset, I could I could get up and walk to the fridge, but now I'm tethered to the computer. So if I need another beer, I have to, like, wait until there's a lull. Nobody's going to be talking to me for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> then, we were literally talking all about you. Yeah, you found uh, I thought you were just being cool. I, I I I think that I think that was that was that was perfect. It's like Bob, you're an awesome guest, and Bob's just like fuck you. I need a beer. <laughs> oh well. I just figured he was nagging us, you know, where you like yeah. you tell him to shut the fuck up, and then they start liking you even more. Mm-hmm. Hazing. No, I was I, 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 I was I was thinking like you know you started talking about him. He's, he like opened up his browser. Like where's the nearest gel- gelatin factory? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. For uh, what you said while I was away, I guess. <laughs> so magnanimous. You're welcome. So, 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 what's what's some shit you guys are like, you know, in, into other than like, you know, the pod podcast? I mean, 
I'm, I'm assuming there's a reason, like, you know, you interview the guys who you, like, who you do interview. Um, I imagine, I imagine you wouldn't interview people you're not into, because <laughs> that would just be really fucking weird. <laughs> well, I don't know. We, we kind of got into the whole lit RPG world because we all started liking the books at the same time, and we were just going through them kind of at a fast pace, but... Well, also, we, you had already been talking to a lot of the authors, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We were on... Through uh, Audio Boom Boom? Audio Boom, where people were, you know, giving out codes for their books. So we were already in contact with some people. But we, we've interviewed people that, I don't know, that aren't necessarily, like, our favorite writers or anything. But we do a lot of narrators. And it, it always... it We always end up talking about shit that has nothing to do with the books. Like, with that one dude who did the hot dog commercial and he we talked about beekeeping for like 30 minutes yeah the beekeeping was good and then there was the dude who did the y2k compliance <laughs> oh yeah yeah this dude samuel hope we had on and uh i actually asked him on because i didn't like the book he did and i didn't understand what was <laughs> happening in it and then he ends up being like a, a banker who came up with the whole y2k well no definitely he came up did with not online come up with banking ones. And he was uh, in charge of stopping Y2K from taking out computers and shit. Wait, this guy came up with the concept of online banking? Yeah. yeah. And then he wrote a shitty book. <laughs> I know. No, <laughs> he's a he from Y2K. So he narrated a shitty book. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> About olive farmers. You'll love it. I'll send you a Well, link. it turns out Y2K is actually pretty interesting because... Like a lot of banks, they had, you know, antiquated systems and the, the change in date did make a difference because they. Yeah. So, guys, if you want to hear this whole story, you can go listen to that episode. <laughs> We're not gonna rehash you know what? Here. If you want, I thought this was a Y2K uh, podcast. Is it? Is it not? No. Kind no. of. What we do is we get other people to come on and abridge their podcasts yeah. so people can come on to our podcast and just get other people's podcast experience without having to go and listen to it. Oh. So, uh, yeah, do you want to hear about the doing. episode where we talked about the Fast and the Furious? Well, I do now, yeah. Arguably our best ep episode, honestly. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't know. I feel like usually it's like me and Josh getting into an argument and then Josh calling me a horse face. That's typically. Yeah. Get in front of the camera. <laughs> Get your horse face in front yeah. of the camera. I don't I don't see it. I don't think he's got a horse face. No, I think you have a baby face. face. Well, I got a new haircut. I think he's adorable. Looking, looking pretty His fly. mane was really out of hand. <laughs> yeah. It's the lighting. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> very flattering in here. I, I just want to reach through, through the camera and just squeeze your cheeks and feed your carrot. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's the weirdest threat we've ever made to anyone. <laughs> I was talking about wearing a feed bag the other day. Yeah, don't uh, squeeze a horse's cheeks, I don't think. <laughs> no. if, that seems like the wrong thing to do. Yeah, they bite, I'm pretty sure. Horses bite. Yeah. I've, I've seen videos. It's not a horse one. I remember when I was a kid, when we went to like, you know, Bush Gardens with, with a friend of mine, and we were just having this conversation of like, we saw the Clydesdales, and we're like, what do you think the guy who's handling them would do if you just walked up and punched that horse in the face? <laughs> 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 and I don't know what, for, for years I was fascinated with that concept. It was like, every time I saw Clydesdale, I was like, yeah, one of these days, man. Let's have to get out. <laughs> But then I grew up and got wiser and realized that these one-ton animals would probably not tolerate that shit. That horse would fucking kill I you, didn't, man. I didn't you get just... into horse abuse until much later in life. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that's why you guys played D&D, &D, so you could just, like, play this these situations out. There's no you and horse. <laughs> it's a nice... <laughs> well, not tonight. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Rick, you say eventually you figured out that punching a horse wouldn't end well. No, no a Clydesdale. A car, oh, Clydesdale. Right. Hey, those those, those half-sized ponies. Breaking news, guys. There's tons of videos of people punching horses online. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. This has already been explored then. The mini ponies are aggressive to begin with. So you're probably going to be just as bad off. They're also at dick level. So if you punch one in the face, it's going to bite you on the dick. I almost guarantee it. That's a good point. 
You should really start your training with toy horses and work your way up <laughs> so you have a solid knockout punch. Are there any carousels around your house? Uh, I'm just going to go out and just surround myself with my little ponies, you know? There's a carousel in the Mall of Georgia. Those horses are toast. <laughs> Getting the carousel, I guess, kind of simulates what might be an attacking horse. Yeah, it sounds like a good place to start. Level, it's level one. Yeah. Local man annoys small employees. <laughs> say, any, any developers out there listening, you know, there's real money to be had in, like, in Virtual Horse Puncher Simulator. <laughs> Spin-off podcast, Man vs. Horse. <laughs> Isn't the goat simulator you're just kicking a goat? No, no. you play as a goat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, I don't know how long thing. you could do that man versus horse thing. <laughs> Seems like the horse would have pretty decisive victory pretty quick. But there is that man versus bear show, which is stupid as shit. Have you guys seen that? Are you talking about bear girls? No. <laughs> That's what people, I thought. People, like, have <coughs> contests against bears. Or Seems see like Gladiators? Like intelligence-based contests? No. <laughs> like, uh, like the bear will have to push like a two-ton barrel, and the humans will have to push like a two hundred-pound barrel. And whoever can push it to the end well, first that's wins. Not fair. Yeah, the bear's not... already pushing more. Yeah. yeah. Bear wins every you time. I'm gonna say I will fuck up a horse in a in a battle of algebra or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck that but show. The... I want to see a gladiatorial combat between a man and a bear. <laughs> I don't want to see fucking barrel pushing or like math. Well, the just last see it, one is the uh, the human gets in one of those fucking uh, American Gladiator globes and the bear pushes them around. <laughs> I, I've watched that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, why isn't the show just that for like an hour or so? Just different people in the ball. I mean, it gets celebrities in the ball. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and if the bear is able to get to the food in the ball, it wins. <laughs> 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 if you just if you tee though, you can just fast forward through the algebra bit. I didn't. I don't know if there's actually the algebra. Oh. <laughs> that might you you already made sense. big promises. <laughs> also, like horses are smart, right? There's that one that like horses can count? Might actually be better. Yeah, than I don't know. Than people are thinking here. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about the one who stomps his yeah, foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Secretariat. Pretty well, sure they can all count. <laughs> yeah. It's only a short step from stomping your hoof to advanced algebra. At least I'm given to understand. I never got it's that shorter than you think. Mm. Then you Monkeys think. can learn sign language. What's the difference? Then, then you sucker punch that horse with a right hook. Yeah, that'll show you for being so smart. <laughs> when it's filling out Nerd. the algebra equation, you just fucking sneak up on it. The horse has been revising for three months straight. <laughs> Fuck it up. It's ready to do this. It's a nervous wreck. It's hepped up on caffeine pills. Solve for <laughs> Fuck you, horse! It's like it's about it's about to give you its dissertation, and you, then you just uppercut it. Surprise! <laughs> this is not the podcast you thought it was going to be, horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I got from that is that uh, man versus horse is probably a really good format for a television show. We've already got man versus bear. <laughs> Yeah, I was against it to begin with, but I was re- I've come around. <laughs> but I worry about it as an audio podcast. That is some of them. The only neat part of the like, equation is man. We could get some sort of bear versus horse thing going on. Oh, oh my gosh. The oh, algebra part would kill it. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming there's a puzzle section as well yeah. where they try to solve a, a Rubik's Cube. And they get the honey the out of a one tree. of those American Gladiator globes. <laughs> Everything goes bad. I might just tune in to see a horse in an American gladiator globe. Yeah, I can't I'm imagine that. Not be <laughs> they don't care about protecting the animals anymore. Oh man, right. I can combine it. Because, you know, like, gelatin is made out of horse hooves, huh? We could, like, get that author in a big <laughs> jello Full circle. Little circle. This is a deep cut, man. Yeah. Horse versus big black dildo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've seen that video. <laughs> I think we've perfected our elevator pitch. So we're ready to take this one to Hollywood. Yeah, I, th- I think we've just like written the next like three shingles of books right there. 
That's not a bad idea. Call Larry Doyle. <laughs> Let him know. He really Call- liked us. Call me unprofessional, but I've forgotten how we got onto horse dildos. What were we, uh, Bevan? Uh, You're the ringmaster here. How did we get here? I'm, I'm still thinking about the horse dildos. He went to get a beer. We yeah, started talking about uh, horse dildos. Oh, oh yeah, I, oh, yeah. I, I, was asking, I was asking you guys what you guys were into. <laughs> <laughs> we got there eventually. My horse dildos. It's, it is a it is a natural progression for us. I feel like we we typically make it to horse dildos every episode, or the invention of hamburgers. Mm-hmm. We usually talk about that. Yeah, it's a big thing in our life. Well, just specifically the invention, or is or like the evolution of hamburgers. Well, we've each eaten over ten hamburgers, <laughs> so yeah, we're, so we're experts. Sh- we're curious people. I'm actually going to eat a hamburger next week. Wednesday? Thursday. Ooh. Nice. I tried steak and shake for the first time the other day. Yes? I was I was happily... Well, I won't say surprised, because I, I wasn't going in with poor expectations. I wasn't going in with any expectations, really, but I had a, a tasty burger. <clears throat> and then that was the, another one. That was the kimchi. It was... <laughs> Did you ask to see that fridge? Fantastic. (laughs) So you enjoyed your steak and shake? Yeah. Well, I enjoyed my steak and my my kids' shakes. There's a reason everything on the menu is $4, man. They can't even give you a full French fry. (laughs) They can't. (laughs) That being said, I love steak and shake. Yeah. All right. All right. I was, uh, JDS, why don't you tell them about your ruler pants? No, wh- I can't be telling everybody about my ruler pants. <laughs> we don't have the, everybody as a listenership just yet. Yeah, I mean, they can be our, our little secret. But... Wait, no. <laughs> are you guys into life-changing inventions? <laughs> Absolutely. Also, do you have, of course. Are, how do you guys feel about Kickstarter? <laughs> I'm ambivalent. If it's the right product. You know. All right. So have you ever been walking down the street and you just like, <laughs> I'd like to know how tall something is? Yeah, all the time. Oh, With yeah. cooler pants, that's, a, that's an issue of the past. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, there, there, there's, there's, there have definitely been times where I've said to myself, you know, I really want to measure my dick to see if it's grown, but I don't have a ruler with me. But now it's like, I have pants. <laughs> Well, that, it wouldn't work. You'd have to take your pants off. <laughs> Even <laughs> better. Like if you're you're walking down the street. So that would actually work for me. As everybody <laughs> does. Guys. And you're like, man, I wonder how tall that, that cat is. Yep. <laughs> Bam. Ruler pants. All right. So you, you just have like measured lines on your pants. <laughs> it's <laughs> not that simple. Yeah, no, no. I was thinking, you know, like a tape measure sewn into the crotch or something. What do you... <laughs> the crotch specifically. <laughs> what do you know about okay. pants off? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how, how tall this little boy is. Come stand next to my pants. <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah, with those pants, yeah. You could. Yeah, that's... that's yeah. That's accurate. That's not the uh, main demographic we're going for. It is a demographic. I'm not going to tell them no. Yeah. You yeah. still could and combine the two. I mean, all right, because <clears throat> ruler pants are only going to measure up to your waist anyway, so you might as well no, sew no, a tape right. measure into your crotch. You so that, you know, if you're. All right, well. well I, why not expand this? You're not thinking about wait, wait, why not ruler ex- pants at the beginning. Yeah. What about a ruler jumpsuit? Yeah. R- ruler overalls. Very tall hat. Yep. With a yeah, with a jumpsuit you could definitely you could go up much higher. Yeah. And yeah. you could do your arm. <laughs> yeah. so if you just sew a tape measure into the crotch of your ruler pants, you can that. go as high as you want. Here, here's an idea, guys. Yeah, I mean Imperial I'm just saying the side. jumpsuit is limited as well. You know, you're not, uh, you're not addressing have- the issue. <laughs> when it when it first came around, too. Yeah. Who's <laughs> laughing? Shut up, Josh. Well, th- 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 I, think, I think this is multi-useful because on the right side, you get to have Imperial. On your left side, you get to have Metric, you know? No. Yeah. 
No, we don't do magic. We'll, we'll, we'll stop. You can just do conversions and be like, you know, it, it's like, wow, your dog is thirty is thirty two inches high, which in centimeters is. You well, we can have like an app. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pants app. Well, yeah. we assume that that the that there isn't an app that corresponds with the pants, right? I mean, that's a given. I have Excuse me, sir. Days, yeah. Can you tell me how tall my pet giraffe is? Oh, oh dear. I see you can't. <laughs> if you just say it's taller than a typical no, pair of ruler pants. That's not the way this works. You absolutely can. It just takes a little bit of effort in climbing. Also, if you're if you have enough money to buy a giraffe, you have enough money to buy that giraffe a ruler suit. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I guess you could uh, sew a like a marker pen into the into the cuff of your ruler trousers, so you can kind of climb up, mark with your trousers where you got to. And then you can like, yeah. <clears throat> Alternative okay. solution to this. Josh, work. write that down. Patent pending. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm making my own rule of pants. And thus began the, the, the great Authors and Dragons versus JVJ off lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob. Bob, I knew what, we shouldn't have mentioned this. What, what, you're, what, you're not, what you're not getting, Bob, is, is yeah. It, I mean, it's only functional for some people. Only some people are going to be walking by and be like, oh, how tall is this hydrant? Um, but we're going to get uh, Jeff Goldblum in a pair of those babies, and then it'll be a fashion statement. And you also have to think, not everyone wears pants. What about ladies? Mm-hmm. They're, yeah. they have the, half the market gone. Yeah, they're not allowed to wear pants. <laughs> <Who's> <laughs> <sorry? signing Yeah. laughs> no, I'm saying they're like, they're saying it's not a wide enough market, but you have 50%. I mean, we can make ruler humans. dresses, too. Oh shit! Can you? Yeah, I mean, you can affix a ruler to anything. What's that? Okay, so, what trying to make. I like the Jeff Goldblum idea because he is uh, quite a tall fellow, so he's got kind of got maximum opportunities with the ruler pants. He'd be using them all the time as well, just to like you put that on whatever the Jeff Goldblum show is. Yeah, that Disney Channel show. He'd be yeah. You know, he you cut every episode down to fifteen minutes because you. Skip the montages where he has the fucking tape measures and stuff. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. There's Speaking a jet- of tape measures, for the dress, you can put it between the, the cleavage. Did we have to get rid of all the parts where Jeff Goldblum has to like leave <laughs> uh, to go get his tape measure? And the camera's just awkwardly on nothing for about 15 minutes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It'd save a lot of time. Yeah. And then that show could use some editing. I think we'd all agree on that. Yeah. Or just some ruler pants. Yep. How much? Would, how much would you just blow everybody in? Like in Home Depot's mind, they walk in. There's somebody standing there looking, looking all sad. It's like I really need to cut these two by fours into three foot sections. But how? <laughs> well, lucky, lucky you. I'm wearing my ruler pants. I really just I I, I had to go back and think about these. I heard. How would you go and blow everybody in Home Depot? <laughs> you can do that with ruler pants yeah. as well. I mean, they're not going to stop you doing that. I don't know if I want ruler pants associated with blowing everyone in Home Depot, to be honest. Ruler dresses? Ruler dresses. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's be honest. If you're wearing ruler pants, you are a bold motherfucker, and ladies can sense that. <laughs> yeah. You, you could theoretically measure other people's dicks without taking your pants off. Yeah. Yeah. With their permission. <laughs> their permission. <laughs> just, right here. I'm going to assume there's some kind of. Like, hey, hey, guy next to me in the urinal lifts up, lifts, lifts up knee. Oh, wow. Well, I hope you have a nice personality. Can, can, you, can you put your dick down near, near the cuff so I don't have to do math? <laughs> well, if they're laying on the ground. Like if they're in the bathroom doing push-ups or something? Yeah. You can... We'll add a conversion in the app. Yeah. Right. The app will take it. The app will do most of the hard work. Yeah. We just got to find someone to make that app. Yeah. It should be easy. Yeah. Everybody can make an app now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's apps all over the place. Well, I'm in, anyway. Uh, they even have apps that track your poop. They do. So we'll make a Kickstarter tonight. You guys can get in send first. You a yeah. link, and then you could send it to all your friends. Excellent. Well, you know, you've got us and, you know, the two people who are friends yeah. backing you already. Yeah, how, much, how much do you think we need to ask for in this? 
Well, do you get to keep the money regardless? Is that a thing? (laughs) When we did it for uh, Sam, we once did a Kickstarter for a guy whose house burnt down, so we're pretty good humans. (laughs) What was his invention? We raised a thousand dollars, and you gave him a car, and I gave him a car, which he didn't want. (laughs) (laughs) Even our charitable donations are shit on. Yeah. So yeah, like. Million seven hundred. I was thinking seven hundred fifty thousand. We already have the fans, so (laughs) (laughs) you just need to combine it with a ruler, and uh, you know, I can imagine that's going to be a long and technologically challenging process. I told. I keep saying it's not that simple. You guys aren't listening. Um, The (laughs) app is the the hard part, but I mean, (laughs) we need five five bucks to make the. Make the pants and six hundred and fifty-five thousand to uh, develop the app. <laughs> that sounds fair. Yeah, the, the app needs to start start up when it first like loads. Are you wearing your ruler pants? No. Then why the fuck are you turning on this stupid fucking app? <laughs> Why do you even have this app? You make? <laughs> but that should just be the answer, no matter what you choose. <laughs> Well, what we'll do is in the app, any button you press just gives us a five star rating. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> if I wasn't in before, I certainly am now. You uh... don't tell me this is the first. No. There are no, there are no ruler pants apps. We're good. Well, that's on the Play Store. Oh, on iOS. Oh, Who oh, uses oh. iOS though? Honestly, that's I'm cool. looking. You got to make sure you trademark the name, like you know, right away. What, is that a threat? <laughs> Ruler <laughs> pants, a sec, no substitute. <laughs> you don't want those motherfuckers coming in like you with their yardstick pants, uh, fucking with your shit. <laughs> oh, that's a good we're point, we're hoping to get one of those as seen on TV deals with the flex seal dude. I'd love to see that guy in a pair of ruler pants. Oh yeah, nothing. Sweet. All right, we got it. Once we get that seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Oh, what's the show where they try to sell the businesses? Shark Tank. Shark, Shark. Shark. Shark Tank. If we can't get that on Shark Tank, I don't know what they would buy. Well, if, mm-hmm. if we ever hit our highest Patreon tier, which is uh, which is snorting a cocaine J.K. Rowling, um, at that point we'll be so high as fuck, we'll just probably just be more than happy to give you the 750K. That's fair. Yeah. Well, our plan is we take the, the ruler pants thing, we take it to Shark Tank and sell it, 100% of the business to them. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah, that's, that's the way to go. We don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> Just let them open the app. I know like second plan. Don't yeah. We've got such confidence. In this <laughs> yeah, but like you, you, sell it for, you sell it for whatever you sell it, then like 10 years later you're all built bitter as you keep turning on the news and seeing, you know, and, and the world's, world's richest man who started Ruler Pants. <laughs> Just everybody's wearing ruler pants. Just walking down the street, measuring shit, and you're thinking, "Oh man." <laughs> you know, this kind of started out as a joke, but that kind of isn't. The, the not bad. Kind of I, inspire you? I feel like contractors could really use these. Pants. I mean, if we can get Judge Judy in them, yeah, God, ruler robes, sweet, ruler. and also like she can. She can bankroll this whole thing. She's yeah. worth. I looked it up honestly. She's worth ten times more than Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, like he's he's small yeah. potatoes. Yeah, but I mean, he makes more, but it's all nose candy. They, they think how awesome that. Would, there's only one thing I wear underneath my 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 robes: ruler pants. Ruler pants. You're gonna feel especially bad when when you see the ad, and the guy walks up to the skyscraper, leans back. And that tape measure just shoots out the front of his pants. <laughs> I actually came up with that idea first. Bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah, to answer your question, when we're not uh, podcasting, we're inventors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should change it to Josh versus ideas. Really get that kind of a uh, speculator crowd in, like like we do on our podcast. We found out over the years, no matter what we name our podcast or how many different podcasts we have, we have a solid two person listenership. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, but we have a, we switched to the interview thing because we're hoping to get uh, 
Billy Mays on one day. Mm-hmm. We keep emailing him, but he's just ignoring <laughs> us. <laughs> he's uh, more fickle than Macy Gray. Isn't he in jail? I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, would, that would explain why he won't answer. Uh, yeah, that would be the only reason. <laughs> there, oh, there. Billy Mays is dead. Yeah, he he drowned in some jello. Oh, <laughs> that's not even the guy I was thinking. I was thinking the other guy. Well, the other guy beat up his girlfriend or something, right? Then Sham Wild guy. Yeah. Is that who he was? How What's did he beat up his girlfriend? He was he was like big. She <laughs> couldn't <laughs> fucking. Jim? He used the sham one. <laughs> Just wow. moved to his left. <laughs> Whoa, because his eye, his eyes is not funny. It's the worst. She, 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 she probably mouthed off about the sham wow or something. Yeah, it, <laughs> it ain't that absorbent. Oh, oh, it's on, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> He doesn't have a messed up eye. It's just real, it's just squinty. Yeah, he, he he's always looking from one side. All the photos are from one angle. What is his name? Sham wow. Vince Hoffer. It says it right at the top. That doesn't. That's not a real name. Yeah, that's not right. That's his name. If we talk about the same Billy Mays, didn't he like die ten years ago? Is that true? When that's is that why he will not respond to our emails, and he would be the wrong guy anyway. <laughs> his widow, his widow keeps opening up her emails and weeping. Why? Why do they keep torturing me? <laughs> oh man, yeah, he died ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys have. You left that one a little late. <laughs> the, the pain, the pain is finally almost gone. Why won't you be on our podcast? No. <laughs> That's I mean, the guy I was thinking of, Anthony Solomon. Is that I've guy? Never heard of him. I don't know. Isn't he the fucking Flex uh, Seal? Yeah. Who's the Flex Seal guy? Flex. We'll just look up Flex Seal. This this is also the other thing that happens is we end up just going down the Google rabbit hole. Most podcasts. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Well, I've just Googled Billy Mays. Apparently, he was also known as King of the Pitch. So he might have been the guy you needed to get on board for the ruler pants. Billy Mays. No, who's this guy? Who's this other well, guy? Well, some fat flex guy. We can <laughs> use, uh, like, super cuts to, to make a... Phil Swift. Oh, God. Yeah. Phil Swift. We've been <laughs> emailing Phil Swift. Cut out the rest of that shit. Billy Mays. <laughs> 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 But that's like an honor for yeah. someone in his his business, I would think. He likes being called Billy Mays. <laughs> I'm Phil Swift, but you can call me this dead TV presenter from 10 years ago. <laughs> Dear Fli- Phil Swift, if you're out of prison from beating your wife <laughs> with a sham wow, would you please be on the podcast? <laughs> You might be having problems finding other employment, but have we got a product for you to pitch? <laughs> now put on these fucking ruler pants. I don't know, though. Like, do you really want ruler pants associated with the dude in jail? What do you measure in jail? You don't want to know. You don't want to talk about it. That's why, you know, in, in restaurants and stuff, they got those little measuring things at the, at the door so you can identify it. Like, you can give information to the police when people come to rob you. You, you can make this work. Think, think think of how much amusement parks would save by not having to build, get those like stupid, like, you know, cardboard cutouts at the, at the beginning of rides. You just walk up next to the ride attendant. Nope, you're not too, you're not big enough. Get the fuck out of here, kid. We, we understand yeah, yeah. how big this idea is. <laughs> I mean, the that more would you guys be, think about it, the more you're going to, yeah. you're going to just fall down the rabbit hole with us. And that would be a good suit. For You're sure, not but. even standing above this jackass's roller pants. <laughs> roller pants. Yeah, I mean, instead of having children walk up to a sign with a clearly denoted like <laughs> level on it, you just you'd walk up to people's children with your pants. Yeah, <laughs> you must be as high never, as my crotch. The ride is right. <laughs> you never feel more comfortable than when a carny in a dirty pair of clothes pants walks up to a child. <laughs> Stand real close, boy. <laughs> Don't stand next to that man's crotch. Skin to skin. It's the only way you can tell if you're out tall skin, enough. Skin <laughs> Ferris skin. wheel. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a winner. We don't need a... Yeah, but like we... Since the patent's pending, you guys can't post any of that. Just keep that in mind. Ah oh, man, that's the podcast. Okay, okay, relax. Okay, okay. okay. Well, hold on, hold on. I'm going to turn off all the recordings. You know, God, <laughs> God damn it. 
you said so far that your uh, your favorite podcast has been talking about the invention of hamburgers and uh, the invent no I not the invention said, of fast food. Said, I thought it said the that. interview was me was uh, his favorite Dan podcast. We don't yeah, know what he's talking about, honestly. Sometimes I just say things. I, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to stop my mouth when my my well, brain is committed to that now, time. So. We've never been interviewed. I before. think we talked about hamburgers once. Well, I think what you're getting at is, and since there's three of them and three of us, we could have a debate here. Are can hamburgers be closed? That's a debate we've had going on for four years. Oh, you may have just solved like environmental problems here <laughs> because uh, you know you see those time lapse videos of people who are trying to like kind of shit on McDonald's or something they'll put a, a hamburger out and go look this is what happened to the hamburger after three months nothing I never understood that either it just means you'd be full for longer way yeah. to go to McDonald's exactly I don't see what the all you've told me there is that you know they've invented a superior food product yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was that, that's been in my fridge for like eight weeks. Uh, should I eat it? Oh, no, I feel better about it now. <laughs> we're we're not saying that cheeseburgers or hamburgers would be uh, good clothing because definitely not. We all agree on that, right? It's certainly durable. But like, can you can you can you put cheeseburgers around your crotch? You know, walk outside and and not be arrested because you're wearing clothes. And I'm just oh, going to put it, put it on the line here. I'm not sure which side of the debate, the debate I'm on. I don't remember. <laughs> but which, whatever, whatever JDS says, I'm going to go with the opposite. Yeah. Well, well, look, I, have, I have a privacy fence in my backyard. So let me just say, I will walk out wearing whatever the fuck I want, including, you know, two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, you know. <laughs> pickles, on, pickles and onions between my buns. You're not in the, you're not. Going with the spirit of the argument here. This yeah, I like think going in your own backyard issue. where nobody can see you. No. Yeah. Uh, can, now, you, can you walk through a <laughs> playground? I guess is a better. <laughs> I think we should, at the moment, like, Rick, I think we should really kind of delineate right now before we get into debate the difference between making clothing from hamburgers, which is assume where we're going, and just putting your dick in a hamburger. Because those are different things. <laughs> Is there though? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. <laughs> from our point of view, I mean, if the hamburger is big enough and you just put your body in it, that's pretty much damn. <laughs> Are you talking about like just holding a single hamburger over your junk? I mean, no, well, it's, it's not clothing a clothing made of. It's not clothing. You have when else. To, but when does it become clothing? Once you can put your hands in the air, no if one you, sees your testicles. <laughs> If that's you that's cover that's your entire leg region in hamburgers and and just tape them on there with like boxing tape and then uh and, and draw little lines on them so you can measure shit. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. I, I gotta say, yeah, if all, the dog is full hamburgers, <laughs> I gotta say, if if all clothes were hamburgers, pickup lines would be so much easier. Could just be like you know, hey hey, my burger my Burger King wants to put a special sauce in your White Castle. <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be that like, yeah, bar. Like <laughs> and, and and this and this is likely why why this is most likely why I'm probably dying alone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Let's um, play find the to, people. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, I've seen a woman naked, so not to brag or anything. But if you want to send me a message, I'll tell you how to talk to ladies. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think if everybody was wearing hamburger pants, then the entire romantic dynamic would just be, I don't know, it'd be an alien landscape. I don't know how to talk to a woman in hamburger pants. Well, there's different kinds of, like, what if she's wearing sourdough? She's still a, and, but she's still a woman. You just, <laughs> well, I mean, he's got a point, but cultures change. What just if think. she's wearing sourdough? There's a man who knows how to talk to a lady. <laughs> 50 years ago, if a woman was wearing pants, it'd be a lot more scandalous than a woman wearing hamburgers. That's true. That's true. Or at least the same amount of scandalous. Yes. Yeah. Well, probably the exact same amount. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. With you. So, yeah, like you would learn how to talk to women wearing hamburgers. Yeah, I guess. Cultures change. We all adapt. Yeah. I think I think the, the biggest... The smart argument on this is clothing has to be made of cloth 
That's that's not but, true. That is not true. You, no, I'm saying, I'm you not, look up the definition every time, oh yeah. and it never says clock. Okay, that's true. Let me let me just get the definition of clothing. Yeah, you know, you know. Actually, think about it. Some clothing is made of hemp, and that's not too far away from an Impossible Burger. So, yeah, huh? yeah. Some are made of hemp. Some are made of pickles. Some are made of lettuce. Yeah. Some are made out of hamburgers. If I just or leather. Leather, yeah, that's basically yeah. leather is leather right there. Yeah. But let me I'm just go sure. back to a point uh, Bob made a little bit ago. You could not use packing tape to hold those hamburgers together. The the you know you'll hold the buns, but the burger will shoot right out. You'd need to use like a zip ties on the burger. If you put if you held it tight enough, if you taped it tight enough, those patties will stay in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you cover yourself with mayonnaise first. There. No, I, well, I'm thinking the opposite. <laughs> Hold the mayonnaise so the patties don't slip out. Yeah, I don't see how the mayonnaise can help the situation. <laughs> well, it depends on how tight. Especially not at the playground. It depends, <laughs> so well, yeah, yeah. it depends on how tight your uh, your hamburger pants are, though. You might need yeah. to slip into them. <laughs> mayonnaise would help the hamburgers move across the body as you That's moved. That's true. But at the beginning, all the hamburger pants are going to be custom made. So they're going to yeah. made you, yeah, true. and then by the end of the whole, It'll be like denim. you would be able to tell the rich kids from the poor yeah. kids because all the poor kids would have homemade <laughs> yeah. burgers. If the rich kids had like McDonald's or yeah, maybe the, even steak and shake, who knows? Yeah, yeah. If they're if you but see the white, that's kind of disintegrating yeah. into, the, into the pink. Yeah, is the big, big chunks pink. of onion and pepper. <laughs> you know they're poor. <laughs> If you were going to do an athletic wear version of the hamburger pants, you'd probably need some kind of uh, little lubricant to help that along. I don't think mayonnaise is probably the least obscene. White Castle, they're small. It's like chain mill. Okay, so so I think we've just we've decided that hamburger shape. Uh, hamburgers, <laughs> hamburgers covering your body, that's clothing, right? Now, what if you are in a, a, a tub, bathtub, bathtub full of hamburgers? You're completely covered. Yeah. They're not affixed to you. You could anyway. use your hands. Yeah, you could. Are you still wearing clothes? You could pull up. You could pull. You take your hands out. Pull up your ruler pants app. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would still you, work. You won't be able to log in because it'll say I'm wearing ruler pants. <laughs> oh, you say no. I forgot, yeah, I forgot about that. That's I, important. I'm more yeah. thinking about like you know just being bitter, like you know see, seeing that rich motherfucker walking down the street with his with his Kobe beef shorts. He'd be like, "Fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, one percenter." <laughs> A basketball of hamburger <laughs> is <isn't, laughs> yeah. pants I keep sending you. Yeah. I think clothes, by definition, have to be something you can like carry around on your body, unless you kind of you put leg holes in the bathtub and some kind of uh, you know harness arrangement, and you're just wearing a bathtub full of bath uh, <laughs> full of hamburgers. I'm working yeah. on the solution right now. I got a, <laughs> I got a little art coming up. Okay. By that definition. You're saying if I buy a pair of pants that are way too big, they're not clothes because I can't hold them. I can't put my hands above my head. In, in such uh, in such a case, hamburger pants would be like would be superior because you just throw them on the grill until they shrink up. Well, That's the point. wait, jo- Josh brings up a really good point. If you've got a pair of pants on the dresser drawer, they're still clothing, right? Yeah. So does that mean that hamburgers? Are also clothing just because they're out in the wild? Because you have hamburgers in your dresser drawer? Yes. Anything you put in your dresser could be considered. Oh, no, no. I mean, just in general, if you put jeans on your counter or in your hand, they're still clothing. So anything in your dresser, on your counter, in your hand is clothing. (laughs) Josh, you're being very limiting. I I mean, you're in general. (laughs) Any hamburger is clothing. That's what I'm getting at. I disagree. I think no hamburgers are clothing. (laughs) <laughs> you do for now. Yeah, just wait until you see the concept art I'm drawing, and I think we're all going to agree. We would uh, probably put this as a stretch goal on Kickstarter. I think if we make a million dollars, hamburger pants. No explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, I, Bob, I think you're worried. Um, uh, I, I believe that kimchi can also be pants. Okay. I think I think the most awesome thing in the world would be to where just dress up in hamburgers, walk outside, and then, like, you know, j- jump out of alleys to people. Like, oh, greetings, primitive. I'm from the future. I see. I've come back where you still wear fabric. <laughs> You'd be, you know, if you tried that, you definitely can. 
make clothing out of hamburgers, but you'd be pecked to death by birds almost instantly. Not in the winter. Yeah, then you just got to worry about the hamburger. There are still birds in the winter, but... (laughs) There are no birds in the winter. They evaporate. (laughs) But you you know, dogs would no longer be man's best friend. (laughs) They'd be man's deadliest enemy. That's true. Aside from when you're done with your hamburger pants and you got to get rid of them. Yeah. Like if you committed a crime in them. These are probably... (laughs) Well, then you're just all over the place. Well, officer, he was was wearing hamburgers. (laughs) <laughs> and you're like, clearly not me. And you just got this hungry dog next to you that just looks like he's had a really good time. Just get rid of that habit. Yeah. That would be kind of the perfect crime if you think about it. Robbing a bank while wearing hamburger pants because it's what, perfect. Yeah, oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Because like you'd walk in and you'd walk in there, you'd leave with all the money, and everybody the cops would show up and be like, okay. Uh, ex, like you know, describe the describe the like, you know, the perp. And it'd just be like, nope, fuck it. They can have the money. <laughs> Uh, actually, do you guys want to hear the perfect crime? Of course. Uh, yes. Yeah. This is actually more of the perfect murder, but murder is a crime. <laughs> so it's true. Wanna, it's true. If you want to kill someone, this is what you do. You rent an apartment slightly above theirs, like on the other side of the road, and uh, you fashion yourself an arrow made out of ice. This and, wasn't a book I read. <laughs> How to kill you slightly? No. Uh, Christopher Brookmeyer, I think. Is he a fan of the podcast? (laughs) He's probably a fan of the podcast. Christopher Brookmeyer. That sounds like a a fake name to me. Write that down. (laughs) (laughs) So so this guy in this book rented an apartment slightly above on the other side. No, but he didn't use the the ice bolt thing. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm drawing. Come on, I want to hear the perfect murder here. Shut up. This is real life. This is not a book. Yeah, but there's a there's a slightly more complicated but better way to do it. Oh, blood. The, the blood. The where blood you drain of a your enemy. You drain a little bit of their blood every chance you get <laughs> <laughs> into an arrow. Yeah. Oh, every chance that, you get. Just this Vic's blood. They call him Vic's. I don't know if you guys watch CSI. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> Did it end I ten years know. ago? I don't know. I don't have TV. How much blood does it take to make one arrow? How big is the arrow? A big right. standard. Standard arrow, like standard arrow. Two cups. You would need to make two arrows. You would. You need to practice, right? You'd have to have, at least have <laughs> okay. a practice arrow. Yeah. So step one: get a job at a blood bank. Yeah. And uh, well, you have to become a phlebotomist. Phlebotomist, yeah, that'd be good. So you enroll in phlebotomy school. <laughs> yes. First off, you get slighted by someone. <laughs> oh yeah. You gotta get slighted. Hopefully by someone who donates a lot of blood. <laughs> so then you enroll in phlebotomy school, get a facelift, obviously, so they don't recognize you. Mm-hmm. Or wear oh, just wear the mask. Well, they probably wouldn't recognize you to begin with. They just slighted you. They don't know they slighted you. Oh, that's true. Most most people who I who I like don't know why. Um, but you enroll in the water school. You take their blood, but you have to like say they're donating a pint. You can't take the pint. You can only take a little bit. Mm-hmm. You can take why? Well, you can take the pint. Uh, you, yeah, you don't think the, the Red Cross is going to notice missing pints? <laughs> no, of blood? absolutely not. They have missing pints of blood. No, no, you know something. You replace it with a pint of your own blood. There. Your own blood? <laughs> well, no, no, no. You give your own blood to the Red Cross because they're not going to give a. F- they're not going to give a fuck. Will you just replace your blood with their blood well, that you took? Josh I, and Corey both have tattoos, so they can't legally. <laughs> We've yeah. gotten tattoos in the last twelve months, so that plan's not going to work. And out. the AIDS. They don't really enjoy the AIDS. Plus, my uh, stomach. Is I mean, little... but that works for a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> Like it doesn't need additional damage. We're just talking about the blood at arrow here. Apparently, according to Wikipedia, yeah. the average arrow is eighteen grams, and Eight there grams. are That's not a lot of blood. And how does that equate in pints of blood? Seven. About four hundred and three. It says grams in a pint. How much is a gram of blood? One gram. It's at least a quart. <laughs> now, what court is this? See, that's not I'm even going to be the too. hard part. The hard part is going to be setting up a good situation where this person who slighted you gets an apartment that has another apartment available across the street that's slightly higher. 
I don't like that we're like we're switching from from metric to standard. I can't keep up with this. I just need to know how much blood I need. Also, also you need to be a phlebotomist slash archer. <laughs> Um, well, you're supposed to be working on the archer skills this whole time. Well, the hard, yeah. hard part is going to be... Kind of archery school. Yeah, the hard part is going to be making the ice bow. No, well, since <laughs> the Hunger Games came out, archery's popular, so no one's going to think twice about that. Yeah, the ice bow would be hard, but you got to have all the evidence just <laughs> melt away. Yeah, everything needs to melt away. Yeah. You definitely need more than one practice hour as well. You know, put that the out hard, the yeah. hard part is going to be my dick when I'm working with all this infected blood. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> that went super dark. <laughs> yeah, but there's there's a bright side to that. If you have ruler of how big your dick is. So check out our Kickstarter. <laughs> There's always a silver lining. When the police show up, do you really think a guy wearing ruler pants is capable of committing murder? This is the perfect guy. Here's what, I, perfect alibi. Here's what I'm going to put out as a potential flaw this, right? You've killed your slightly de elevated neighbor with your frozen blood arrow made of their own blood. It's the perfect crime. Until the cops come around and see your fucking kimchi fridge full of their blood. <laughs> that you've been uh, making practice arrows out in your living nope, room. That's, that's why you only right. make the one practice arrow. And you make it at work. <laughs> <laughs> Their work. If you can figure that no, out. No, you work as the red arrow. <laughs> oh, yeah, the your blood 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 your blood's already there. There's blood's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, theoretically, I guess you could make the blood arrows out of your blood. <laughs> oh my god theoretically theoretically at but, least the practice arrows but well, no 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 that's what I mean that's what I mean the practice arrows that's here. where the problem comes in guys cause like what if he has low iron does or blood, high iron does blood freeze yeah sure sure yeah it's not like <laughs> a gel it's Water. not anti-freeze it's liquid I'll liquid freeze the cops will be at this apartment going well the guy's died in mysterious circumstances we can't work it out Maybe we should ask his neighbor who is covered in fucking blood. <laughs> well, and literally staring at us. You know, you know what? You know what might be easier instead of <laughs> because ins- ins- you're wearing your hamburger pants. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say you're wearing your ruler hamburger pants. <laughs> what might be easier than the blood arrow might be a piss arrow, because when the guy once you kill once, once you kill them, they're probably gonna piss themselves anyway. So you probably got yourself covered there, and that's that, that's that much bigger of a fuck you killing them with a piss arrow than a blood arrow. I yeah. Think- would be like, how did this guy get piss in his back? Yeah, you'd have to. <laughs> it's actually in his bloodstream. You'd have to shoot him directly down the dick hole, and that's going to take a lot of practice errors. Yeah, and then there's no guarantee he dies. You might just yeah, enlarge- really, <laughs> really fuck up his day. <laughs> also, I don't know if the Red Cross collects urine. Yeah, I'm, I mean, there's a, lots of holes in that. I, I, I want to have the fun of watching like the guy, the guy who gets shot in the dick, trying to explain to the cops, "I got shot in the dick with a piss arrow." <laughs> well, he just did it in one sentence. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah, over really. oh, oh, oh come on! Oh come on! Who's who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna believe that shit? I'll take one look at you with your bone arrow, your kimchi fridge full of another man's piss, and your hamburger measurement pants, and they'll go, "Yeah, I hope buy it." That's why the arrows. Also made out of liquid, it just melts away. But that's the bow the, is is gone. The fridge could be made out of who, ice too. <laughs> who wants to be dealing with this frozen piss bow? No one. But Nobody that's the wants point to. Of revenge. But the thing is a lot better. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, well, no, no, no. But here's the problem: is the frozen piss bow is easier because when it dissolves, it's easier to clean up. Because when the frozen arrow bl- like bow dissolves, you got that all over your f- fucking self. You don't. It doesn't dissolve that quick. You've already yeah. thrown it into the neighbor's. <laughs> yeah. If you have another neighbor that you want to slight, you just throw that bow into their house. You got to okay. get slighted a lot. That's yeah, one of the sorry. hardest parts: is finding a way to get slighted by two people who live so close. You have to, to be you. very sensitive. We also <laughs> we also no. didn't say it was going to be easy, but we did, we said it was foolproof. Yeah, yeah. it's perfect. It's no, perfect. Even even better, you you make the arrow out of dry ice. It, there's not even a puddle left over. Ooh. 
<laughs> How do you carve dry ice? Well, well you yeah. can't touch dry ice, so this plan's off. No, you, that, that's what they meant. Glo- yeah, gloves. Touch it? Put yeah. hamburgers or, on your hands and, and like, tools. Have you ever tried to shoot a bow with a big glove on? Yeah, have you yeah. ever tried to shoot a blood? Ice? Yes! <laughs> they make gloves for shooting arrows. Um, I used to do archery. But you would have to make a bow out of dry ice. That guys, just doesn't make any sense. Guys, don't you be ridiculous. To make a bow out of dry ice. <laughs> but um, how do you hide the evidence? The evidence. You still make the bow. The out evidence of- is the arrow. <laughs> you take the bow with you. Don't leave it at the fucking crime scene. You don't. The, go- you live at the crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, love the crime scene. On the other side of the road. The yeah. Maybe that part of the plan is stupid. I don't. We've that one yeah, second. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. I don't, did you hear me say perfect earlier? <laughs> you take that, the whole plan just becomes ridiculous. That's true. <laughs> it's like they used to think the perfect crime was a lady stealing a tie, yeah. but now ladies wear ties. Yes. Things change, guys. That's why yeah. we think you should invest in our rulers. Like yeah, you know, the you know, problem is the cops are going to be listening to this like podcast, and they're going to show up to all of our houses and be like, okay, we, fa- we found a kimchi fridge full of a blood arrow, a piss arrow, and dry ice arrows. To be fair, you'd really need like a kimchi freezer to keep that arrow fresh. Yeah, that's true. Because nope. you don't freeze kimchi. No. There's another floor in the plant. Well, actually, we don't know. Bob, do you freeze kimchi? Uh, no, not personally. Is it freezable, though? I mean, everything's freezable. (laughs) Yeah, we've already covered that. We literally just said that. Uh, Uh, No, I mean, our kimchi doesn't last long enough. And no, you wouldn't anyway, because, you know, the the longer it it hangs out, the better it gets. Oh, so you just let it ferment. Yeah. Like your neighbor's body. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Do any of you guys have a neighbor that lives across the street that you don't like? Because I feel like we're I mean, wasting yeah. an idea. <laughs> no, we're again, doing... guys, patent pending. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want you to murder anyone. I mean, I like the, the piss window. arrow myself because then you know not only do they die, but uh, you know when the cops find them, it look or when their family finds them, it looks like they piss themselves. They might piss themselves when they die anyway. Well, they they really in, in, in their own eye stuff. socket. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Man, this guy really had to go. <laughs> uh, I'm looking out my window now and there's no one. I can't really. I don't have a clear shot at anyone. I'm keeping my, I'm keeping my like, you know, my shades closed just because my neighbors are thinking the same doing this to me. Yeah. Sperm arrow. Well, you... <laughs> If you live on the top floor, you're fine. Yeah, you're the king of the castle. <laughs> well, who's to say your top floor is higher than anyone else's top floor? Well, what if you live in the five-story building, the six-story building across the street from you? Well, you know what I meant. Then you wouldn't be the top floor in town. Yeah. Anymore. Well, you didn't say in town. You just said he top said floor. He said in town was implied. You can <laughs> almost <laughs> certainly <laughs> get a lot more of your target sperm more easily than you can get their, their blood. Especially if you're, like, good friends with them. You know? Right. Well, hang on. <laughs> if you're, I'm, not, I'm not against this idea, but how does a phlebotomist get sperm? Well, hi, hi, I'm, so I'm, 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 where a hooker does. I'm not a phlebotomist who you once insulted. I'm just a random stranger who's here to jack you off. <laughs> or you could just be like, I invented this ruler pants. Can I measure you? And then when he takes his penis out, you just jack him off really quick. <laughs> it's really quick. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, oh, too late. Let me show you how super absorbent <laughs> these ruler pants are. Because <laughs> then when his family finds him, that it, he's just covered in splooge. And that's the ultimate insult. Yeah, they, I, I, you guys plan on dying, but I'm going to be covered in all kinds of body food when I go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go out dry now. <laughs> you know, I didn't really. He think... sounds like he has a plan for death. <laughs> if you are a phlebot- phlebotomist and you work at the, the Red Cross, you could just collect everybody's blood. You don't necessarily need to collect his blood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that makes sense. The cops would know he was murdered. 
But they would think. But then maybe they would go. But then maybe they would go to the Red Cross. They're like they would go right to the Red Cross. They hey, let me see the addresses of everyone who's right across the street. (laughs) You know, but maybe he maybe the addresses of everyone who's right across the street. Maybe he shamed you so badly (laughs) at your phlebotomy job that you quit and got the job job as a receptionist at the sperm bank. There, problem solved. I don't know. It sounds like we just create a whole new fucking raft of problems there, Rick. (laughs) Yeah, I don't I, know if this I, matters, I, I, but like, I haven't seen Josh's neighbor in a long time. <laughs> if you're going to do this with sperm, I think it should be all the victim sperm. Okay. Uh, but then again, like... <laughs> <just> <laughs> <like> <laughs> <that's> <laughs> makes, <that laughs> it doesn't really make sense to put your own sperm in there. <laughs> no, but I mean, Rick brought up the, the sperm bank. I think that's not the way to <laughs> well, go. Well, no, you, you, no, you get a job at the sperm bank, then you leave like flyers on their door until they get the hint. <laughs> You could put your own sperm in there just to throw them off. The officer, why would I put my own fucking sperm in that sperm bank? <laughs> it would lead them directly to you immediately. The beauty of officer, the picture, why would I leave my own fingerprints on this knife? <laughs> the tests are so accurate. They can take a little tweezer and pull out one sperm and know it's you. Is that how that works? That sounds, <laughs> that sounds, that sounds that's, scientifically that's accurate. accurate. <laughs> I think I, arrow uh, I might see. be. So Don't they put it in a centrifuge? Well, you put your sperm to in get a all the bone fuse. marrow out of the sperm. Yeah, you watch CSI, out. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, ten years ago, but I'm sure it's still the same. Mm-hmm. The beauty Ritham just takes off his glasses. The beauty of the oh, is that CSI? oh my god? <laughs> see, this is what happened. The beauty <laughs> of the, the blood your pain and that's CSI Miami. <laughs> What's the one with? Who, is it Ice Cube or Ice T? It's I have no ice. That's it's, Law and Order. Law and Order. Is That's the one I'm thinking of. That's the one about the rape, right? Yeah, well, there's sperm everywhere. Oh my god! That's everybody everybody eats rape. Like every sure, That's the one. They all song. have sperm everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they had tweezers, and they pulled one sperm out, and they knew it was him. Did you see the one where the guy injected someone else's semen inside of himself? So when he ejaculated, he was framing someone else. Oh, that's, that's so that's smart. That's, that's science. Not, that's not so that clever. That happens. So clever. And if it didn't happen, <laughs> it will happen. My next CSI script. But I remember reading something about a guy who did that with his blood. He stuck a little vial of blood in his vein. And when they drew his blood, it was someone else's blood. Not and then the cops true. just let him free because he's it, a genius. It doesn't work that way. It's exactly how it works. I don't know how it works, man. I'm you not bl- a you don't just yet. inject yourself no in the blood. Don't just stay there. No, it was a tube. A tube of well, blood. Well, I feel like the phlebotomist would realize there's like, a tube Man, this is really hard feet. to push through this tube <laughs> Dude, dude they, they don't have time for your bullshit. They just want to—they just want to stick you and get the fuck out of there as quickly as possible. This is preoccupied to get the next guy's blood because he stole his parking spot. <laughs> you sl- I slighted him. <laughs> I get what you're doing there. Long you're story short, right don't slide a full body. <laughs> no, <laughs> you stole my park. You stole my parking space. Now I gotta get. A, now I gotta find an apartment directly across from you. And <laughs> Work for the next now six years to kill your ass. Yeah, now begins my six year revenge plan. Did <laughs> <laughs> to cut in front of me in line, you fuck. How long does it take? Does it take six years to become a phlebotomist? I don't know. Probably not. It's probably one of those things you just sign up for. Sounds you, like something you just sign up for. To be honest. You've also got to like become like an expert archer and find the right apartment as well. So. You know, give yourself six years. I'd say. And six after six years, they've probably forgotten that they that they've uh, slighted you, but you remember. Yeah. You remember. They'll drop That's it. the best way to do it. It mm-hmm. can't be someone who knows you. I mean, it's totally doable. You don't have to be an expert archer, right? You don't. An arrow could kill you almost anywhere. It is. <laughs> you just sit in the apartment. The window smashes. A fucking arrow made of blood and or sperm just. <laughs> <laughs> You don't gotta get a second shot. That guy's leaving. Up. <laughs> yeah, the guy's like, that guy's dying. He's looking down at the melting like arrow. He's like, at least it wasn't a piss arrow this time. <laughs> That's why you want to make sure there's AIDS in it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what, just like an area effect? It's <laughs> well, here's the problem. There is one. Sm- well, it's not a big problem, but. If your arrow hits their window, it's going to ruin its trajectory. So you have to wait for them to have their window open. 
So it's got to be a good. It's got to be. Well, nice night. but you want to take already, your shot on a beautiful yeah. sunny day anyway. We already knew that, that you were playing the long game. Yeah. Yeah. So waiting for the window to open doesn't seem like. Yeah. Really yeah, but just think. Wait six years. You wait that six years. He's got his window open. You go to open your uh, kimchi freezer, and it died. You didn't realize oh, it. Oh, no. You lost your, your ice arrow? Your arrow's gone. Yeah, either, yeah, either that or, like, you know, you open up, you open up, you get your shot ready. It's 90 degrees out, and by the time he steps to the window, God damn it, it melted again. <laughs> uh, now I gotta wait six more years to set this shit up. <laughs> you definitely gonna need more. He only opens his window every six, once every six months. <laughs> You're, you've been sitting there prepared every day for six months. Your window still is dripping in blood and sperm. <laughs> <laughs> so that that is called evidence, and that's something you need to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, I have my my hamburger pants to soak up soak it all up. <laughs> oh god, that's smart. The I'm not cops this. will eventually come after you if there's blood and semen dripping out of your window. <laughs> yeah, you've got they, downstairs they neighbors. Like, yeah. Oh, is it raining out? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I should definitely call the police about it. It's quite literally raining men. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it, was, so. it was self-defense, officer. He was always standing outside my window jacking off and, and, his, and with his bleeding penis. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the problem. You have to claim and climb the building, and people can't climb buildings. Yeah. Yeah, that's the least realistic part. Well, well, what, 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 what if the person who. Bloody ejaculation is the problem. Yeah, what if, what if, bloody ejaculation is no problem. I mean, what if, I mean, what if the guy who, like, you know, who, like, who, like, flipped you off that, like, stole your parking spot that one time is, like, you know, it's like a rock climber? Mm. Yeah, it's a potential problem. No, that uh, actually it, helps. Yeah. That's why his blood and semen is all over yeah. your windowsill. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd have to get him into rock climbing somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. every, every, night, every night this guy climbs up the side of the building like some kind of pantsless Spider-Man. <laughs> I mean, that's another couple of years at least getting him to that kind of expert rock climbing level. <laughs> Again, I mean, there are, there are easier ways to murder a person. Yeah, just but not... Perfect. Yeah, this right. is the, the way to do it and not get caught. Yeah, if you guys don't care to get caught, proof. obviously just, you know, yeah. just shoot them. No, I'll just talk them into suicide. Well, <laughs> just cyberbully them into suicide. Cyberbully, <laughs> that is, is an easiest. effective way. By far the easiest. But it's not a perfect way. I mean, by now... By now you know the guy well enough to uh, convince him to take up rock climbing and just like jack him up now and then. <laughs> so you've got it in, you know, you can have like a personal talk with him about whether life is worth living. Yeah. Uh, with him, you know, you being his only friend, maybe it isn't. So I feel like obviously you're just climbing away from your problems. <laughs> just let go. <laughs> and it's if just... you guys can't tell I'm a great cyber bully. <laughs> it's like you know you can't jack off of my ledge for the rest of your life man one day it's got to come to an end and then what do you got left <laughs> he'd be like but you're the guy who talked me into this <laughs> six years I, I didn't used to be this person but now I have to do it yeah. that's the long game like psychological mm. aspect of this murder scenario as well that's the best part of the psychological aspect though yeah you guys are working on books, right? Do you, like, have, have you considered this plot? <laughs> who, who are you talking to us? Yeah, I think when we did our interview, uh, at least one of you was writing a book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, a bunch of us wrote books. But no, we would never put what, that in a book. Uh, That'd be 66.6% <laughs> of us have, have uh, uh, published a book. I'm guessing that all of the authors and and dragons podcast people have wrote books so i guess i'm maybe the only person here who hasn't written well yeah. you've got you've got a, a stellar plot just yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you, and you got and you got that line from basic instinct would i really be stupid enough to write about a guy jacking off on my like on my on my ledge and then making a piss arrow officer if i was going to kill my neighbor with a semen arrow after six years of psychological <laughs> wherefore do you think i'd be stupid enough to write a best-selling book about it? Well, I'll probably take all that because my books, I, I wrote a, a children's book, so I might need that for my next one. <laughs> yeah. 
See my sims in the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Part two. Well, yeah, if anyone writes yeah. about that, that's that's slander. That would, that would be a great. That would be a great children's book. Literally. A is for the asshole who, who took my parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's libel. It's yeah. in writing. That's true. Josh, do you? Why do you have it like ninety degrees in here? It is super it's hot. So it's hot. pretty hot. I was just thinking that. It's probably because we're so close. Yeah, we're very close. I feel very sick. Here's 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 a silly question that has nothing to do with with murder or punching horses or meat pants. Do you guys find it easier to do a podcast actually, like you know, just being there with each other? Yeah, definitely. Totally. Oh, we would not do it otherwise. Yeah, we have that. If I was in the same room as you guys when you were talking about all that stuff you were just talking about, I don't know if I could have. Uh, I don't know. I would, I would have been very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, we're I'm, very uncomfortable I'm glad. because of how close we have to sit to each other. I'm glad. And most of us refuse to wear pants. Yeah. Until the ruler pants. It's kind of a, you know, until the ruler pants come out, none of us will wear pants. Yeah, two of the three of us are not wearing pants. We'll, we'll let okay. you guys figure that out. Well, that seems like quite cozy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if it's 90 degrees out, perfectly acceptable. so... <laughs> Things used to be easier. We also used to have less microphones, so we had to sit like this. Now we just do it because we're fun. Yeah, we like it. I guess we could move that. Well, I mean, we definitely could do things differently, but we like it. This yeah. is what works for us. Get off our backs. <laughs> you guys find it easier to podcast away from each other in different states and shit. Well, because we're in different states, yeah, that's easier. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the only way we could do it. I suppose it would be easier if we're all just in a room, but you know, I'd have to get an air uh, air travel out every week. That'd be exhausting. Have you considered VR? Oh, not until you just said it. <laughs> yeah, you just do a virtual reality. It's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> just, just do a virtual. Yeah, toddler could do it. You guys got that podcast patreon money you can just buy yourself some vr headsets and mm-hmm. just pretend we're all in a room together mm-hmm. yeah i like I that still like that can we do that yeah we're right you, here why quickly <laughs> well you would <laughs> right, like an hour yeah but you well, would have to buy a vr headset and then i'd have to mail you dinner every week oh, yeah yeah we're provo- we uh the two guys over here that no one can see because this isn't visual but we drive an hour to get here every week, but the other dude provides dinner, so it's it's worth it. It's worth oh. it. We had hey. spaghetti today. You can't give virtual dinner. That would uh, just not be the same. Uh, I, was thinking, I was thinking, like, we're, we're doing all this prep work for, like, Nashville this year. We could have just said, like, you know, Authors and Dragons Con 2020 in cyberspace. <laughs> <laughs> Is, din- go is dinner, dinner eating hamburgers off your crotch? <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, no. But, I mean... I mean, just, I mean it could be. If you want it to be, nothing can stop you. <laughs> well, sometimes when you're lazy, you don't want to cook dinner. Uh, you got hamburgers there. <laughs> yeah, man. I might have to steal that virtual reality idea. I think that could be a good interview format. You know, it's like just... You're talking shit still, but you're doing it in virtual reality. I actually did. I actually, actually did an interview like that once. Oh, yeah. yeah, like that was like a year or two back. Um, was Space Ghost? No, no, it wasn't Space. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was. It was a. V, it was a. It was, a v, it was like a VR chat room, and it was just. Yeah, it was. It, it was different. <laughs> Especially since I, I actually didn't... like watching the like YouTube videos of people playing VR because I like them. I don't know. It's. Fun watching them move their little arms and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Little arms. little arms are the funniest. When they are, have they, arms, are they, they T-Rexes? Just... <laughs> yes. oh, kind well, of. Yeah. yeah, I mean, have you ever been in a VR room? Yeah, once. It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Is it like the, the, like the one room you have set up with posters and all? Is that no. the same thing? Well, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't I know still... what a VR room is. I guess I'm an idiot. I did, I... I was in a VR room the other week with my kids and nephew. I was like, we quickly deduced that, you know, we all came into this. And you can only see, we were elven archers. And you could see the armor and um, their gloves and helmet. And that was it. So the only way you could really communicate was with jerk-off signs. So <laughs> just, 
before we did. So yeah, the only pretty... way you could have <laughs> <laughs> the built-in microphones would have helped, but whatever. Oh well, we didn't figure it out, you know. It's a, <laughs> it's a visual medium. We weren't we weren't prepared for the possibility of microphones, but your hands are right there. You can see your hands. What else are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, virtual virtual interviews. I think I'm gonna look into that. Just two guys making jerk off signs at each other. It <laughs> <laughs> would be a good YouTube channel. Nope. Can you get you demonetized? Can you pick quick your now? avatar when you do that? Well, you said you were. Surely you can make a jerk off gesture in on YouTube and not get demonetized. Oh, that's no. taken down. YouTube's all about demonetization. They hate jerking. Off. <laughs> 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 it's their one pet well, they you. love not paying people. Well, fucking fascists. <laughs> Have you ever seen that VR room that has, like, there's two guys, one's a horse, one's a bear, <laughs> they wrestle. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to be listening to these this podcast and thinking some of these ideas they're having are pretty out there, but I think we're just a fucking ahead of the curve. This is all going to come to pass. We're just, we're at the bleeding edge here. Mm. We're thinking on a different level. Yeah. Yeah. Really but a future of podcast entertainment. Really I wouldn't call it the next level, but it's a different level. Yeah, it's over. It's like over. <laughs> it's like it's like across the street and slightly, slightly above. Slightly above. <laughs> that's, that's the way we like to think. Nice. I guess I'm gonna be really pissed if I like you know I, I turn on like I don't know the Travel Channel next season and they're like it's like new show coming up, <laughs> bear versus horse while they're wearing <laughs> hamburger pants. <laughs> <laughs> like you sons of bitches oh, I would not want to be the horse no. Bears love hamburgers It's like that's true. Honey and hamburgers That's what they love yeah. And horse And picnic baskets <laughs> 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 They love horses, and horses. <laughs> like all their, That'd be like just It should be called birthday for the bear Yeah <laughs> Bear versus salmon horse. It's just a producer who <laughs> no. just fucking hates horses <laughs> Narrated by David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, the That's horse loses. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you put iron hooves on yeah. it. Well, if you armor the horse, the bear doesn't stand a chance. No. That bear is just eating metal all day. No, I, only one horse is not going to do it. Three, An horse, three armored horses. horse would take down a bear. No. I, I don't know about that. Yeah, you're all just the horse, man. But you don't know about horses. They'll just run right through you. And that armor is going to knock that bear on the head, and it's going to hit the bear in the nose, which, if a bear is attacking you, you punch it in the nose. Not true. Once it gets hit in the nose, <laughs> it's gone. See, I've never wore armor, but I always thought someone wearing armor and being pushed over is just you getting armor pushed on you. Like, it can't protect you <laughs> that much. It's still metal being smashed against you. And it's a, but you've never... Or armor spawn. Is there really such a thing as... As like bear proof armor. <laughs> well, if you make a big enough cheeseburger, <laughs> <laughs> the bear would get full. The bear would get full. <laughs> and then you run through it wearing your rest of your armor. Mm -hmm. I'd like uh, to think that if I was attacked by a bear, I would I would choose the punch it in the nose option over the play dead option. But I, because either way, I know I'm about to die. It depends on the type and of I, bear. No. That play dead shit is just bear propaganda. <laughs> he started it. Oh, big bear. Yeah. Big bear. Big bear. Big bear. Well, yeah, they'll get you. Um, the problem with the person in the nose is he's just going to open his mouth. And then you're going to, your hand's going to be in there. How tall is a bear? Like nine foot tall? Yeah. You basically just <laughs> feed yourself <laughs> the bear. Yeah, just pull your pants out. Yeah, if I, okay. <laughs> why, oh, why did I wear my hamburger pants into the woods today? <laughs> In for a big surprise. So you got to jump. You got to pull a little Mac from Mike Tyson's punch out and jump up and punch the bear in its nose. That will work. I don't see any reason that would not work. <laughs> <laughs> the bear's all tired from eating that horse. Yep. Yeah. You just have to be slightly faster than the bear. Yeah. And bears can't be that fast. They're big. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Full proof. Man, we've covered a lot of ground yeah, today. I know. We've, we've learned a lot of a uh, lot of interesting things. 
Yeah, this has been a real fun game, guys. Thanks for playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that I, that was the interview portion. Now we start the game. <laughs> that was the game. Oh. Didn't even realize oh. you were playing. I'm, Congratulations, I'm, you won. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll be. I'm gonna put that on my LinkedIn. Yeah. So that means we get to host Authors and Dragon Con this year. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. We should have really discussed the stakes of this game before we began. <laughs> well, that does ma- that does make our job a lot easier. Don't get wrong. <laughs> yeah, true. Yes, I believe the little girl said something about a check. <laughs> Uh, well, all right. an hour and a half, let's, I think. Yeah, let's try and land this with a little bit of normality. Uh, is there anything you guys would like to plug about your podcast? Is there any uh, like interesting interviews coming up or something you'd like to direct our listeners to? Yeah, we've got a bunch of interviews in the bank um, coming out soon. Yeah, including a narrator of uh, Critical Failures. So you be, interviewed John? We will. He's, uh, we have uh, the interview set well, it's up. It's not in the bank, then. It's, it's in the bank. It's in the <laughs> bank as far as anything we do. If he knows what's good. That, it's well, yes. There are those edited ones we haven't posted. Yeah. Those are more in the bank, yes. but the rest are in the bank. They're lined up. They're lined up. We have a prolific guy. <laughs> um, Pending direct deposits. They're on their way to the bank. A little less in the bank is Judge Judy, but she's bank. Ad- she's across the street. <laughs> everybody's and slightly higher than everybody's the bank right always now. been saying since she became like a figure on TV, she's very bankable. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, and uh, by Slime Girl, right? Yeah, and uh, I wrote a book called Slime Girl, so buy that. Cool. Josh Stout, when's your book come out? Um, look for that, 2021. It'll be called The Weird Guy in the Apartment Across the Street and <laughs> Slightly Above Mine. <laughs> that's not even a working title. That's, yeah, not that's even, it. It's concrete. <laughs> it's, you start with the title. You get a good title, then the book writes yeah, itself. It's, mm-hmm. it's catchy. I'm already in touch with a uh, prolific. No, with an editor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just send him an outline. I was gonna say, it's, it's not only a it, it, it's not only a title; it's a summary. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I don't I don't like the books when I don't like when they put stuff on the back of the book. I just want the title to say it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but all there at the front of the book is a title and a big stuff yeah. too, so There won't yeah. be much in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Ends with a picture. Yeah, aside from that, we just like to plug the new Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty good. We have yeah. nothing to do with it. No. But, you know, John Cena. So. Yeah, they keep saying John Cena's in the trailer, but I haven't seen him. <laughs> I, I get it. No, it's no not one else funny. does. <laughs> not funny. Hans back. Nearly that. He nearly got that. You don't know who Han is? No, I don't. Oh, Han is back in the Fast and Furious yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. I died. know you thought he died. But I, he is, that, is that a spoiler, though? It's in the it's trailer, a, so I hope not. It spoils either way. <laughs> spoils the trailer. But I thought Vin Diesel went to Tokyo to get his ashes. Yeah, he did. But that was different for some reason. <laughs> the movie's not the, I don't know the fuck do you expect us to explain it. Yeah. No, I watched like a 50-minute YouTube video explaining what could be happening he could have amnesia oh okay that's a summary of 50 minutes <laughs> well they can find this all on our, our fast and furious podcast right no because we are doing that well the new one we'll keep them posted yeah yeah you can check it out on our website uh what's our website jbj jbjpodcast.com yeah you want yeah. to clean that up for them so maybe if you can uh you can check out that fast and furious summary on our website jbjpodcast.com how do you know they added anything there. Also, okay, <laughs> we're not putting up a passenger. <laughs> we do edit things, but I gotta leave that in because I thought it was funny. So that's okay. I find it hard to cut stuff out. We do a lot of like inside jokes, and it doesn't work. And out. if you cut something out in the beginning, it doesn't make sense at the end. Yeah, <laughs> it. it's a lot yeah. to keep track of. We're gonna make you guys sound like assholes. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about murder for the last hour. We're gonna like dub ourselves like asking intelligent questions, and you guys going off and ta- yeah, like hamburger pants, pork sperm. <laughs> You're like, what do you think of politics? We're like, well, you put the, you freeze the sperm, and then you uh, ice arrows. Well, I mean, it would have been easier, but you guys wouldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, who do you favor in the Democratic primary? Ruler pants, man. <laughs> All righty. I'm glad we went into this podcast with absolutely no plan. That turned out really well. I enjoyed that. I think that turned out a lot better than maybe the the, uh, the original plan did. What would have? We're really good at what we do. Uh, yeah. It definitely turned out better for you guys from our perspective because we don't know how to play games, and our yeah, our goal was to talk about cat scan machines as much as possible. It would have been miserable, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so. Uh. If you try to do anything seriously, it doesn't work out with us. That's uh, okay. We we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we gave up on that. Well, keep that in mind next time you guys play cat scans and catacombs. Invite <laughs> us over. It's a real game. You make that up. <laughs> I made it up. <laughs> well, it's All right. Got to, uh, got to commit to that now. Man. Um. How do we sign out of these? Uh, well, thank you, listeners. For joining us on this episode of Side Quest on Authors and Dragons, friends. That was an excellent sign out. Thanks. <laughs> do you do you so want good. us uh, do you want us to do a soundbite where we ask you to end the podcast in the traditional manner before you say that? Uh, <laughs> we can go ahead. Yeah, those are always fun. All right, Bob. Why don't you go ahead and end the podcast in the traditional manner? I think, I think, that's not the traditional manner. <laughs> you don't have a traditional manner. We had this discussion in the last podcast. Uh, I'm talking about the traditional manner on the JBJ podcast, Steve. All oh, right, okay. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, if you listen to it, it's the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, Josh asks whoever we're talking to to end the podcast in the traditional manner, and then we just sit here in silence while they have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have explained it. I was fucking putting Steve on the spot. All right. Well, you kind of, yeah. I kind of played into that then accidentally. No, I, I hate it. I wish we would not <laughs> ever do it because it's, it's just like it, it makes them think that it, we are just – Assholes. Yeah. It's a solid way to end the podcast. It's not, it is very good. We've been complimented on it. I <laughs> if you're like not, it. If you're not that I, th- I mean, I thought you were yes. assholes for doing it to me, but I, I like it. <laughs> so traditionally, we're assholes. <laughs> well, if they just that's, see, that's what's called an inside joke. Yeah. Now that Bob's on the inside, he loves it. That's true. When he was exactly. on the outside, he fucking hated it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, people would listen to the podcast before they came on. We can't expect people to do that. We can, and we should. Congratulations, guys. You just spoiled your entire podcast for our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a fucking lot. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't think any of them are coming on our podcast or listening to it. That's I'm not the super spirit. <laughs> And on that, and on, uh, and on that note, I hope that spaghetti was good, guys. <laughs> it was. Josh made seven pounds. Yeah, I made four pounds. Cut this part out. The government actually pays us to leak state secrets in the middle of our podcast because we have so. <laughs> 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 uh, that, I haven't seen any of that money. Well, you know. You, Invested it you back ate, into the podcast. You ate the spaghetti. It went toward the spaghetti, yeah. That's true. You think those theme, song, <laughs> theme songs by themselves? Mm-hmm. They don't. And that Doggy is the, the traditional way, way we, end we end the podcast. podcast. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye, guys. You can say bye, too. Will you say bye? Sure. Oh, bye. Bye. Yeah, I think we're ending. All right, bye. <laughs> Daisy, all Daisy.